Hello, I am delighted to be telling you about how we are attempting to make a planetarium show accessible to blind and vision impaired audiences. And this is something being led by me, Chris Harrison, alongside Nick Bond, James Trayford, Anita Zanella, and many more volunteers. And we're delighted to have funding from the SDFC Spark Award, as well as an Royal Astronomical Society Education and Outreach Grant. A little bit of motivation before we start. I think astronomy is a fantastic science for engaging members of the in public. I think this is partly due because of the beautiful images that we get in the image in the media and in popular articles, whether it be the pillars of creation, like the image on the left, the uh, planet going around another star, like the image in the center, or the first ever image of a supermassive black hole, like the image on the right that was recently put out by the Event Horizon Telescope. But are we missing out on engaging with blind and vision impaired audiences with focusing on these beautiful images as our methods to portray astronomy. Well, if you think about it, we're all actually blind to astronomy. We can't go outside and look up at the night sky and see distant galaxies or see supermassive black holes or exoplanets. We'll rely on giant telescopes to collect that light and then we turn that light into an image that we can look at. And most of the light's not even detectable with our eyes anyway. It comes in different forms of infrared light, radio light, X-ray light, like this montage I'm showing on the screen. Galaxies can look very different in all of these different wavelengths of light, which our eyes can't even see. Some telescopes, like interferometers such as ALMA or the Very Large Array, they don't even make images directly anyway. We take the data and we turn it into an image. So we make this choice to make take this data and turn it into these images. But it doesn't need to be like that. We could make different choices about how to represent this. And indeed, astronomy can be BVI accessible. And there are now many projects around the world who are using the senses of touch to portray the beauty of astronomy, making tactile 3D images or tactile 3D models in order to interact and touch the beautiful things that we know are in the space. And I'm just showing some examples here on the screen from some of the different projects of that. But today I want to focus on sound really and how we could use sound to represent astronomy too. And so as well as being useful for accessibility purposes, sound has the opportunity to really help everybody enjoy astronomy even more deeply. And this is because sound is naturally multidimensional. It changes with time. You can use spatial information through stereo or surround sound effects. You've got amplitude information, frequency information, timbre, and this can all be used to encode complexities of astronomical objects. And we're also very good at picking out signals from noisy sound. So for example, there's something called the cocktail party effect, where if you're in a loud room, lots of people talking, you are able to tune into one voice and listen to that despite all the noise. So there's really a lot of possibilities that we could use sound for. And indeed, the process of turning data into a sound, also known as sonification, is being used in astronomy more and more around the world for a variety of applications. On the screen, I'm just showing a few of these projects on a world map. And I urge you to see Anita Zanella's talk where she gives a bit more of a summary of all of these ongoing projects. But for me, this started back in 2019 when I was working with Dr. Nick Bond at the British Science Festival and we put on a show called A Dark Tour of the Universe. And the idea of this show was not to use visuals, but instead to combine tactile models and sounds. So as we took the audience on a tour of the universe, they got to experience each thing we were visiting, both with a tactile model, but also by listening to it. So we took real data and we turned it into sound for each location. I'm going to attempt to play you some examples. Apologies if these are a bit jittery. And the first one is going to be of the TRAPPIST-1 system, where we're going to listen to each of the planets, where we've turned each planet into a sound. One will appear one at a time. So 
So there you're able to listen to each of the planets going around the star. And for me, that's even more beautiful than an image would be of that system. And as an other example, we took real data of a cataclysmic variable star so we could listen to how the star flares up as material falls onto it. So there you can hear how the star is flaring up. Okay, now we took that show and we used it as an opportunity to get some feedback. So after the British Science Festival, we also played it to more BVI and non-BVI audiences. And we took on board some feedback that we got. So some of the feedback was that the sounds are a bit confusing or scary. So that made us realize that we really needed to develop these sounds in collaboration with our target audience. Secondly, we were given feedback, well, why haven't you included any visuals? Because this would be very useful and insightful for either partly sighted or fully sighted audiences. And indeed, we thought, yep, you're absolutely right. So next time we'll create a audio visual show. Fine, well, then we were told maybe we should reduce the number of topics in one show. We crammed a lot of information into a short time. So we took that on board and we thought, let's focus the content and also let's try and create bite-sized chunks. So each individual topic can be explored individually. And finally, we got many international requests for the content, but we haven't really produced the materials in a way that could be easily shared. So next time we want to create a pre-recorded show and make the tactile model elements optional because tactile models can be particularly difficult to manufacture, at least in bulk for large audiences. So we should provide that as an optional, not required part of the show. So with that in mind, we got the funding to implement that feedback into a new show where we're creating a 35 minute full dome pre-recorded audiovisual planetarium show. All of the message will be understandable with a soundtrack alone, but we will add visuals to the soundtrack, which is the opposite to how most shows are produced where you add the soundtrack to the visuals. And then we will allow the show to be broken up into three to five minute chunks and make flat screen um, versions of the chunks so they can be listened in YouTube or, or whatever. And also tactile models could be used in collaboration with those bite-sized chunks. And finally, and importantly, we're doing this whole process in collaboration with BVI volunteers, as well as a professional writer and poetarian producer. So the steps of development, the first one was get the feedback from the pilot show, which we've done, then co-design some new ideas with the BVI volunteers. Now we've finished that. And now we're in step three, which is writing a full script and set of sounds for the first draft. And that's ongoing. After we've got that, we'll get some feedback again and we'll make some edits as necessary and finally we'll send that off to a professional planetarium producer who will add the visuals in full dome format and then finally we'll distribute this online for free around the world just get a little give you an idea of how the show is going to be we're going to imagine that we're in a spacecraft which is fitted with a sonification machine so any light that we experience on our journey can be converted into sound and we'll do that at each location Firstly, we're going to fly to ESO to learn a bit about the telescopes. And while we're there, we'll pick up our tour guide, Nick Bond, our inspirational blind astronomer. And one of the first things we'll be doing is we'll be listening to the stars appear in the night sky. And when we have done that, we'll be taking off and lis um, listening and watching the Earth moon system, listening to the moon go around our heads. There we go. I wasn't sure that was going to work, but we had a little listen there to the stars appearing. Each star is assigned a sign. Each star is assigned a sound as it appears in the night sky. And then we'll listen to the sun close up. We'll go and visit the sun and listen to the intensity of the sun. 
And finally, we'll go to the solar system and learn and listen uh, to the various planets before returning back to the spaceport to finish our journey. So thank you very much. Happy to take questions now or via email.